And uh, some of you that go by yourself sometimes, you just come at visitation time, you can take somebody else with you and be a blessing to them. So uh, keep that in mind, Thursday evening also at 7. Now here in Proverbs chapter 11, we want to look at the, probably the greatest verse in chapter 11, maybe even in the book of Proverbs, uh, verse 30. All right, now everybody get settled down now. Proverbs chapter 11, verse 30. The fruit of the righteous is a tree of life, and he that winneth souls is wise. Of course, that's the great verse on being a soul winner in the Old Testament. And I'd like to preach to you this morning on the subject, the greatest work on earth. People are always placing the emphasis on the wrong thing. Um, today, out in the world, the emphasis is being placed on being a success. Uh, money, education. Isn't that the gods of America today? The gods of America are more money, more knowledge, learn this. Matter of fact, they believe that education, most people in the world today, that is the greatest thing you can get is education and money and success and looks and popularity and all of that stuff. And um, that's not true at all. That's not true at all. All these things are going to pass away. The greatest thing that you can do on this earth is use your influence and your talents and your abilities to bring another person to the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ as their Savior. You can't do anything any greater than that. My uh, point in the message this morning is to challenge you, every one of you, all of you, to be a personal soul winner. Um, these days, even in churches, the emphasis is being put on buildings. A lot of people say, oh, look at our big, beautiful building. The building doesn't impress God at, in the least. God is interested in people. The only reason the ceiling's high in here is because we build it high so we can put a balcony in here one day. That's the only reason. It's not for looks. If it was for looks, we'd have made it like this, you know, and, and made it all pretty. It's so people can get in here. That's the whole purpose of the building being here. These days, the emphasis is being put on experiences. People are saying, well, I went to church and I had this experience and it was just so wonderful. I felt electricity go down through me and all this kind of stuff. Well, I don't, I don't care what you felt. What I want to know is how many people are you reaching for the Lord Jesus Christ? That's what God's interested in. That's why Jesus died is for souls to be saved. Let me introduce the message by this thought this morning. If you took all the lost people in the world, people that are not saved, and you line them up single file around the world, beginning at your front door. And let them stand like this, single file, and line them up all around the world. It would reach around the world 30 times. The line grows 20 miles a day. And if you drove 50 miles an hour, 10 hours a day, it would take four years and four days to pass all of them. If they were all standing on the side of the road hitchhiking, it would take four years to pass them driving 50 miles an hour. Lost people. Lost without God. Look out your door. The fields are white under harvest. Sin shows no favorites. I just read uh, last night where that they found a corpse in the lagoon there at Disney World where some people had had a party and a guy got so drunk that he couldn't, he couldn't get his way out. He uh, drowned there because of his sin. It wound up being the editorial business manager for Newsweek magazine. Sin shows no favorite. It don't just get the drunk down on the street corner who has no money or education. It gets the high society, those that are up and out, just like it does the down and out. And they're the same. I've seen people saved in a lot of places. I'm, uh, I've seen people saved in restaurants. Uh, one of our men, the youth choir, went to sing somewhere the other night. <clears throat> Brother Dean over here drove the bus that night. We got out and uh, we, was getting, we all went in. You know, everybody just mobbed in at McDonald's, pushing and shoving. 
in a nice Christian way, pushing each other out of the way to get first in line. And it was raining. Brother Dean was out there in the rain standing, telling a man, I guess his wife, daughter, somebody, how to be saved. He come in a few minutes later said, they got saved by the grace of God. Last Sunday, we had about four people saved right here at our church, counting in the bus work and everything. What a blessing that is. I've seen people get saved in hospitals. I've seen people be saved in schools, in home, jail, flea market. There is no such place as a bad place to get saved. A lot of people have the idea that you have to be in a church building to be saved. Not so, not so at all. Let's think about this just for a few minutes. If there is a hell, and I believe there is, no, there is according to the Bible, nothing, nothing, no, nothing is as important as keeping people out of that hell. Not me, not you, not your feelings, not your home, not your car, not your time, not your grades, not your, your job. Nothing is as important as keeping people out of hell. Nothing, nothing is as important as that. I believe this morning, if we would uh, spend more of our energy and efforts toward keeping people out of hell, God may look down and work out some of these other problems in our life that we're spending all of our time on. We'll be interested in what God's interested in. I want to say the bringing of one soul to Jesus is the highest possible thing that we can do, brings the highest honor to Him and the greatest work on earth. Number one, Soul winning honors God. Soul winning honors God. When men change, people know God's power. It brings glory to God. Several years ago, we had some uh, boys come in up there in the, in the old building before we moved down here, and they got saved. And their life changed just like that. I mean drastically. Their life changed. They worked at a business up the street here, and them boys started going to church. I mean, they got in there Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night. And they, they were doing real good. And I went up here where they worked one day and I was talking to this guy. And he looked at me and he said, I don't know what you're doing down there. But he said, you sure got old so-and-so straightened out. And I kind of looked at him and grinned and said, I didn't get nobody straightened out. I couldn't, you go out here and talk to some of these guys right up down the road drinking and partying and tell them to change. They don't laugh at you. It takes God to get a hold of a person's heart. You know what? That old boy, I don't boy, I told him, I said, uh, uh, they've accused us of brainwashing, but I wouldn't know how to brainwash nobody if I wanted to. I said, God is blood washing some, and it brought glory to God. You know what that old fella done? He thought, well, something's going on. I, I, you're doing something right. And I said, yes, sir. Listen, there are nine times as many lost people in the world today as there were people, period, in the days of the Lord Jesus Christ. Nine times, nine times. And you know what's wrong with us Americans? We're spoiled rotten. God's been so good to us. God's blessed us so much. Most of you are sitting here this morning. You've had all the calories you need this week and a lot more. And brother, you you got your refrigerator full of food. And you've got it plenty in the, in the kitchen. And you've got a car sitting outside. What we need to do is get the burden for soul winning that will honor God. And it does bring honor to his blessed name. Let me say secondly this morning, soul winning changes communities. People talk about changing the world. They said, we need to go out and change the world. I'll tell you how to change the world. The world starts with communities and communities start with individuals. Individuals went into Jesus Christ is the way to change our community. You know that our church can and has affected McDowell County for the glory of God. Do you realize that there are churches all over this county who now have visitation programs who never did before until that God used our church to put the pressure on them to start one? Do you realize that's how communities are one to God? Do you realize that that's what changed? I'll never forget the revival I got saved in. I told you a little bit about it the other day when I was preaching. I was preaching uh, the other night on my testimony. I run up and down these roads for all of my life till I was 18 years old and didn't give God too much of a serious thought. 
I knew there was a God. I knew there was a heaven. I knew there was a hell. I knew all that stuff. But it wasn't real to me. It wasn't personal to me. And they began to have a revival down there at Nebo Baptist Church. Somebody invited me to that revival. I heard about one of my friends getting saved. When I heard about my friend getting saved, it, something got a hold of me. And my cousin who worked at the store down there, she said, Danny, why don't y'all come to our revival? And God used her to put a little conviction in my heart. And I, I said, maybe I will, maybe I won't. Well, there were some weird people hanging around here during that time. They were from Appalachian State University and they had a group down here and they were helping out in that revival and they were just weird looking. I mean, I didn't like them because they didn't play ball with us and when they wouldn't play ball, I thought they're sissies. And maybe they was, maybe they wasn't, I don't know. But anyway, when, when an when a, when a 18 year old boy swings in a swing, instead of playing ball, I worry about him. And uh, I said, uh, there's something weird about them people. They didn't come over and play ball with us. Well, the, the revival got going. God spoke to my heart. I went. I got saved. The next evening, I was sitting out there at the store, down at the store. You used to sit on the drink cartons like this. It was about this tall. We'd sit out there every evening. One of my best friends pulled up. He pulled in up there at the gas station, uh, got out of the car. He said, hey, boys, let's go run around. Let's do some things. I said, can't. They said, why not? I said, we're going to church. You're going to church? See, out of my high school, if you'd have asked my high school graduating class, which one of these boys in here is going to be a preacher? I can tell you right now, I would not have been their pick. I guarantee you, I would not. They still don't believe I'm a preacher. Some of you still don't believe I'm a preacher. Sometimes I don't even know if I'm a preacher. But I'm gonna preach till I figure out if I am one or not. I want to tell you something. He said, you're going to church? I said, yeah, I got saved last night. And he went. And I had a little OMG. And I'd take the top of it. My hair was way down here like this. And I had an old pair of blue jeans. The night I got saved, I had on a pair of blue jeans with a flag sewed on them like right down here. And uh, I went in that day. I said, I got saved. You know what he done? He went home, changed clothes, come to church that night, and he got saved. You know what? I was influenced my first soul to the Lord Jesus Christ just because I wasn't afraid to open my mouth and tell him that I got saved. Amen? Now listen, you can do it. You can do it. It changes community. I got on an airplane here a while back. I think I was going to New York. And um, you know, usually I sit, if there's empty seats, that's where I sit. But if not, you have to sit where they assign you a seat. I sit down. And uh, I, there's three seats like this. And there's one here and one there. And there's a window. And there's a lady sitting right there beside the window. I said, hey, how are you? And uh, I always feel like that God puts me who he wants me beside on an airplane because I fly all the time, you know. And I thank God, whoever you want me to witness to, you put me beside them on this airplane. And uh, man, I'll check that, brother. Y'all too cool in here? That's what I thought. It's freezing, man. Just knock it down on about, about 70. And... Uh, uh, but it ain't snowing. It ain't snowing, is it? Okay, it ain't snowing, so just calm down here. You'll be out of here by 2 o'clock. If it don't snow. If it snows, it'll be dangerous no matter what I'm saying. Turn this up just a tad, Brother Roy. What I always do, I always figure God puts me beside who he wants me beside. One time I was up in Philadelphia or somewhere. I was coming back home. The plane was full. I mean, there was all, there was people lined up. And I was just sitting there waiting because I figured I ain't going to use sitting on that thing no longer than you have to. So I was sitting there and waiting on the line to die down. There was these two teenage girls standing there in line. And they was like this. They had all their luggage. They was going to the beach or somewhere, you know. And I figured some parents probably didn't have any more sense than to give them the money and just send them off on a vacation by themselves. And they were standing there going, <laughs> you know how teenage girls do. They had about that much sense, that much. And they were standing there and I thought, now, boy, them girls right there is headed for trouble. They're headed for trouble. And you know what? A hundred and something people on the airplane. I get on the airplane, hand them my ticket. They said, right there, Mr. Castle's your seat. I wound up sitting right with those two girls. Out of all them people, there they sit. There's them two. Here sit me. I said, hey, how y'all doing? And the Lord says, witness to them. Well, what I do, I always wait till the plane is taken off before I start witnessing 
you can witness a lot better when that thing, especially if nobody had never flew before, because they're sitting there like this, scared man. And so I said, "Hey, how are y'all doing?" I thought, "I'll wait." We get up, we got, and they're just holding on like this, and that thing's taking off. Because when it takes off, it just goes. Boy, you can just feel that power throwing you back in that seat. We got up in the air, and I said, "Have you girls got your ticket?" And they said, yeah, yeah, we got our tickets right here. I said, no, no, I mean your other ticket. You got your other ticket? And they said, what other ticket? I said, well, your ticket to heaven, you know, in case, you know, in case, in case we don't make it. <laughs> they, look, they looked at me and said, don't talk like that. And I said, now listen, girls, you never know. These things go down all the time. So you realize if we Christ, there wouldn't be enough of us to scrape. There wouldn't be nothing but a greasy spot. I mean, when they said, hush! I said, we got to face a fact. Really is scaring me, man. I was scaring myself. I said, I said, there wouldn't be enough of us left. You, you couldn't scrape us up and put us in a casket. I mean, we'd be, we'd be like hamburger meat. I mean, we'd be just destroyed. They'd say, listen. I said, have you got your ticket? Boy, it ruined, I mean, tell you, it ruined their flight. I mean, they sat there, they turned green the entire time. Well, this other lady I was telling you about, I was sitting there and I said, what's your name? She said, Jennifer. I said, nice to meet you. I said, I'm, I'm Danny Castle. I'm a preacher and I'm going to New York to preach. And I began to talk to her. And as I began to talk to her, you can always tell. I give her a tract and I said, do you know if you died today, you'd go to heaven? She said, no. I said, do you go to church anywhere? She said, I, I, I was raised a Catholic. I've been in Catholic church all my life. I said, well, do you know that you'd go to heaven if you died? See, that's the issue. That's what's important. The important thing, not where you're sitting in here this morning. The important thing is, where am you going to be, man, when you leave this world? That's what's going to matter. And you know what? She said, no, I don't know. And I said, would you mind if I took the Bible? showed you how to get saved? She said, no. And she's real polite and everything. So I took my Bible. I started showing her. Romans 3.10. As it is written, none righteous, no, not one. Romans 3.23. Romans 6.23. Romans 5.9. Romans 5.8. Romans 10.9. Romans 10.13. You know, we had an hour and a half. I just take my time there. And she started getting interested. And I said, would you like me to show you this? She said, yeah. So I scooted over beside her and I started telling her just like that. And you know what? I said, she began to ask me questions. Every question she'd ask me, I started giving her some answers. And she said, you know something? She said, you're the first preacher that's ever talked to me like this. And I said, well, Jennifer, i tell you something. God loves you. And God put me on this airplane beside you. I said, look here. Way down there on that old sinful world. Man, you can see it, the, the, the ground way down there. I said, God, a lot of sin going on. God knows it all. And God knew I was going to be on here. And he put me on this airplane to tell you that he loves you today. And you know what? I saw a big tear. Started coming down. The stewardess comes down here. Would you like, no, go on, go on. They're always messing you up. You know, want to give you some peanuts or something. And I said, I said, I said, no, ma'am, go on. And she went on down. And I said, Jennifer, God loves you. And big tears started going down through there. And you know, you don't. I'm not one of these people that tries to push everybody I talk to into making a profession right then. But I felt God dealing with that girl's heart. And I said, if I bowed here and prayed with you right now, would you ask the Lord Jesus Christ to come into your heart? She's going. <laughs> I get and I said, okay, let's pray. She bowed her head. I bowed my head. I, I said, dear God, would you save this young lady? I pray that you'd touch her. And I said, now, Jennifer, you pray. You ask him. You ask him to come into your heart. She prayed. I prayed. Then when she got through, I said, did you ask him? She said, yeah. I get, and I said, well, did he save you? And she said, yeah, I believe he did. She said, I'm different. She said, I feel different. You know what, man? You know what? When I got off the airplane, I was going, I mean, my feet was floating. 
I wasn't even touching the ground. It was just like I was just gliding. The preacher, Brother Willie O'Dell, nasty weather. You know, they ain't got nothing but nasty weather in New York. Most of every time I ever been, there's snow. I gotta go in two or three more weeks or something like that. But I wanna tell you something, brother. My feet was floating. I told the pastor, I said, amen, preacher. I said, I got to lead a lady to the Lord on the airplane. You know what? I told him about it at church. You know what? I'm convinced this morning. I'm convinced that's what's wrong with a lot of God's people is you're not doing, you're not being the witness like God wants you to witness and everything in your life seems to be going wrong and you're not happy and you're not, you fuss all the time and you're not satisfied. If you'd get busy doing what God saved you to do, God might work out those other problems in your life. Amen? I believe that. Some of you people in here, you've got a personality. You could be a greatest soul, soul winner in the world if you just do what God told you to do. Some lady called a great soul winner one time. She said, I'd give the world if I could win souls like you can. And he looked back at her and he said, that's exactly what it caused me. The world, the world. That's why D.L. Moody said, I never saw a moviegoer who was a soul winner. You know what? The world will keep you away from winning souls to the Lord Jesus Christ. I've seen people saved a lot of places. We got people in here. Did you know we've had some people win some souls just in our church just this week? Where's Brother Gordon at? You in here, Brother Gordon? Stand up over there just a second, brother. See that guy? He's got him a rest home ministry. And he just went and won somebody the Lord in a rest home the other day. How old was that person? 82 years old, the last one. He stood up and told about it. He told her in a house, other night on Wednesday night. Okay, brother, thank you. And he said, uh, he said, uh, well, he said, I go and talk to this man or this woman, I forget which one it was, and won that person to the Lord and got them saved right there. And he does that on a regular basis. Listen, there's people out there that your testimony could make a difference to if you just make up your mind to be a witness and a soul winner for the Lord Jesus Christ. Where's, where's uh, Lori Moran? There you are. Raise your hand. I won't make you stand up. Raise it high so they can see you. Wave it like that. See that lady back there? She has a, a, a beauty shop. She fixes hair for a living and uh, or, or help out her husband there since he don't have a job. But uh, listen, you know what? She, she fixes hair and she told me the other day, she said, Brother Danny, I just got to lead two people to the Lord in my shop this week. What a blessing. What a blessing. What a blessing. Win two souls of the Lord in the beauty shop. Amen. Hey, that sure is a lot better than what goes on in most beauty shops. Man, I'd throw up if I had to listen to what goes on in most of them. Where they just blah, 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 blah. She's got Christian music playing in her beauty shop. I mean, she goes in there. People go in there. I mean, uh, and I have people ask me all the time. She's the one that, that fixes my wife's hair. People come to my wife all the time. Who does your hair? Lori Moran. So they go in there and get hers done. If I'm gonna start charging her for every time my wife goes down there. Do you know something? You can be a witness. I heard about this old woman who used to go to the rest homes and shave them old men. And uh, that was her ministry. I wouldn't want that ministry, but she had that ministry. And she'd put them back in the chair and she'd take a razor, you know, and lather up their face and shave them like that. That's a pretty good way to witness, you know. I mean, you got a razor to some guy's throat, you know. Get him down there and say, Dost thou feel the Spirit striving with thee? <laughs> Would you like to die right here or get saved? But did you know something? Hey, man, that's great. That's great. There's a lot more ways of doing it. You don't have to just, you say, well, I'm just nervous about knocking on doors. Well, most of us are. Nobody hardly does that. There's very few people can do that and feel at ease about it. But I'm telling you, God lets you cross paths with people all the time that you can be a witness to for the glory of God. Soul winning changes communities. There's different ways of fishing. There's like a hook, you know. There's a net. The same, all different, there's different ways of reaching souls for the Lord Jesus Christ. Soul winning, number three, gives great returns. Brings results. You heard me tell just the other day, I had a funeral service for David Newton. David Newton, one year ago, on Christmas Day, was hauling off a load of trash. 
And David Newton, going to the dump, and heard uh, our radio program on WBRM at 9.30. He said that as he drove that truck, God got a hold of his heart, and he said he started crying so hard that he couldn't even see the drive. One year ago, Christmas Day last year, not, 90, not 95, 94 Christmas Day, and he said he went home, couldn't even see the drive, and got down on the, down in the front of the couch and said, Oh, God, God, please. And he got changed clothes and come on to church that morning. And he started sitting right over yonder where that door is. And somebody told me, they said, Brother Danny, did you know somebody been listening to you on the radio? And he come to church, and I didn't know who it was for a long time. They found out in October, four months ago, but it was that he was dying with cancer. And he went down, down, down. I went and visited him just, uh, I don't know, about, I think it was the Thursday before Christmas, I went over and seen him. And he's sitting there in a the chair like this. He had, they were giving him straight morphine into his veins. That's how bad the pain was. He's sitting there on the chair like this. He said, I know everything's all right now. He said, he said, I know if this can reach my kids and help my family and like that and get right with God. He said, this will be worth what I'm going through. And a few days later, he died. And I pre- preached his funeral up here. You know what? Y'all don't know what a great, satisfying feeling that was. To know that that old boy had heard the gospel, that he got saved. He lived nearly 50 years out in sin. My kids going toward hell in the last year of his life. I made it in the heaven. That's all that matters, folks. Nothing else is going to matter except where they go when they die. That's, you teenagers, that's why we try to encourage young people to go out. You teenagers, we have teenagers right here in our church. You can grab you. And you, you have done this. Some of you have. Some of you still do. Some of you are a little cold on it right now, and I'm just freaking this to get you back in that. You can grab you a handful of tracks and hit Walmart, Pizza Hut, place for teenagers just hang out and go and talk to them about their soul. You don't know how God might use them. In our bus ministry, our bus ministry is probably the greatest soul winning tool in McDowell County. They're in this part of the country. I believe that. God is using it to be a great soul winning ministry. Now listen, listen. We, y'all, you people ought to be, you ought to be begging. Give me a spot, give me a spot. Let me do something for God. God's been good to me. I can work all week long. I want to use a Saturday morning for His glory. He said, well, I just don't have time. You got time for them ball games. You got time for that little league. You got time for everything else. Hey, give some time to God. It ain't going to hurt you. We need to have people on this altar this morning. Let us say, God's been good to me. I've got good health. I've got good strength.